Two went on a rant as well. Everybody's going on a rant. Everybody's ranting. Everybody's kung fu ranting. All right. Adam went on a bit of a rant. He decided to jump in his car and just start going off on people. Now, personally, if you have to ask me what the reason was, I personally think, having been a fan of No Jumper, I don't watch it anymore. And I'm not really watching the other channels either, to be fair. I have a feeling that Adam, deep down, misses the guys. He misses AD, he misses Terrell, he misses Pun, he misses all those dudes. Even Duno, he misses the guys. Because even though they were just employees of his who did shows on his channel, they were also his friends. They hung out together. There was that um, famous clip of a no um, Adam out to dinner with his wife. And AD surprised him in a restaurant. He was actually in the, in the kitchen cooking the steak. And he brought it out to serve them on a table. And Adam was quite surprised by it. Like they used to actually communicate and hang out outside of the office. Outside of the studio. And I don't think Adam has any friends really. Outside of the people that he probably hangs around with in the porn industry. He doesn't really have any real friends. So those were the that was the first time in his life he had some real friends. It was a bonus that they were all gang affiliated. You know, he loves a good old gangster. He loves a good Nig Nog street gangster. So that was a good advantage. And they were actually people that he enjoyed being around. So now they're not in his life. He's absolutely spurging out because he's realizing as he approaches what his mid 40s and shit, he has no real friends. He has no real community, no real social group. And he's just on his own here banging slows with his wife. And it's not as fun as it first seemed. So that's my thinking. I think that's an undercurrent that's going on. But it also could be an undercurrent where Adam could be like, you know what? These guys were dancing on my grave when times were bad for me. When they all jumped ship initially, all those guys from back on Fig, Fig Munity, um, Ace Boys and Community, when they all jumped ship, they were all dancing on his grave because Adam went through like a little bit of a depression-y, disappearing from social media place where he wasn't really online and whatnot. And he was probably going through it. Then, of course, he bounced back. He got things in order, hired some new hosts and shit. And now the jumper's sort of like doing okay, not as well as it was before. But it's, it's not surviving. It's doing what it needs to do. So now you're probably thinking, you know what? They were dancing on my grave when I was quote unquote down. So I'm going to dance back on their grave. And he's putting it on them. So it could be one of those two things. It could be he misses his friends, or it could be he's getting his get back. You tell me what you think. If you're in this. This is such a rapper thing to do, to just be driving around on live. It's like, am I going to regret this? Is this, is this just bad form? It's such a rapper thing to do. But what I'm not going to do is do the rapper thing of, like, pulling the camera up and letting everybody see where I'm at. That's what I'm not doing. That's a little too zesty. I can't uh, do that sort of thing. But I'm definitely out here on live while I'm driving around in the morning doing various different chores and activities. You know, this is like time during the day where typically I would be uh, engaging with other people's content, listening to something like the New York Times, The Daily, listening to some news about uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and what's the one right now? Israel and uh, Parmesan and oh, Palestine. That's what I was trying to think of. I was going through all the P words. But instead, I figured, you know, why not? Like, why not get in here? Ooh, edgy, edgy. Instead of saying Palestine, he said Parmesan. Yo, Adam is a fucking lame, isn't it? Adam is so lame. Here, make some content. Not gonna lie, I just got tested for STDs. Got, got the- Ooh, he has sex. Oh, he has sex. Whoa. Sex boy, sex boy. Needle in my arm. Um put the put the the swab in my butthole uh oh. it's like a q-tip type you have children you're in your 40s bro fucking hell thing you used to like clean out your butt and then uh what else i, I peed in a cup and then they stick like another swab down your throat and uh all that just to basically like prove that i don't have an std which is pretty cool uh you know just to be in a position where every two weeks i have to be I'm sure there are content creators out there like Adam that exist. Content creators who make normal content, cultural commentary stuff, pop culture stuff, the stuff that I do, the stuff that others do way more successfully than I do. 
And they also have a life where they involve themselves in the adult industry. They do porn or OnlyFans and shit. I'm sure they exist. But surely they're not always as corny and as lame as Adam. Why is Adam and his dilly ants with that scene just so more, just way more lamer? Why does it come across just so more like, I don't know, try hardy, obnoxious and stuff? Like, what is it about him that makes that stuff just lame? Because I'm sure they exist. I'm sure there are regular guys and girls out there who do adult entertainment and do normal content and aren't this just like, I just had sex and I had to get an STD and I fucked and uh, it's it's funny all these things you have to do so you can bust loads in people. It's like what uh, Palestine Parmesan? It's like, bruh. Basically, figure out if I have any kind of diseases lurking around inside my body. But man, I went like so much of my life without almost ever getting tested, and when mm. I think back on it now, man, don't you make yourself bored, bro? Talking about sex this much. Doesn't it bother you? Doesn't it bore you, bro? Like, it's like anything. It's like the person that can always find a way to twist a story or a current news topic into football. Into celebrity gossip. Into music. It's like, oh, shut up. Like, God almighty, bro. That is crazy. That is so reckless. That I was just fucking random scallywags from the bar and just not even thinking about... Uh getting tested i'm not going to be interacting with the chat as much as i wish that i could right now because of the fact that i'm driving and i don't want to get an offender bender and if i do i know how funny it's going to be and i know how much you guys are going to enjoy it shout out to uh mimo 600 in the chat he out here shout out to uh boe sosa in the chat he out here he coming on no jumper soon we, we, we tap it in people think we only stir up drama in chicago not true northern california la any part of America can get it. Can get the no jumper interviews, stirring up some, some uh, you know early twenties gang members getting into it. Just kidding. But if the music is hard alongside it, then yeah, we might have to have those conversations. Somebody said, "Dude is on fentanyl right now." <laughs> I mean, I've seen videos of people on fentanyl. I don't feel like I'm giving off that energy right now. If anything, I'm giving out uh, coffee energy. Look at uh, Azay Productions wants to come on again. He's seen Half Pint Films doing their thing on, on No Jumper, which hasn't actually dropped yet. He said, no, I need I need a cloud infusion. Fuck all that. Uh, shout out to my boy, AZ, though. Um, where, F, FYBJ Main, where is he at? What's going on with him? Surely driving and looking down at your phone at all times like this is not the most safest way to drive, no? Why don't you just have the phone up on the fucking stand next to his fucking like, line of sight? <laughs> <laughs> this is my thing about FYBJ Main. I've been tuned in to um, what do you call it? Uh, the the new DJ U interview. You're under whooping, J Main. This is like a, a serious under whooping scenario because I've been clip I've been clicking on the links. You're just chilling. He's turning into like every like stoned ass fucking rapper doing interviews and not really. Saying Oh, this is stream. Like, damn, like, J Main is kind of like going through the transformation that a lot of rappers have where they start getting money and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, this this is dope. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy hella weed, I'm gonna buy some lean, I'm gonna buy some perks. I'm not saying that J Main's on lean in the perks, I have no knowledge of that, but you know, let's just put it out there anyway. You know, it's just they, they start getting too fried, and then all of a sudden the music gets boring, the the, the interviews get boring, and then all of a sudden just shit is not the same, and that's a problem. Um, so that's, that's my advice to J-Main based on the last couple of clips that I clicked on. You, you gotta whoop more. You gotta over whoop. Cause it's, keep in mind, this is a guy who was like fake tattooing OTF on his face. He was, you know, fake pretending to be a doctor. He was just doing, doing the most at one point. And now it feels like he thinks that he gets to like, just do an interview and not really whoop. And that people are going to still be impressed. I don't think that's really how this works. Um... You ain't hard foo said that he wants to um that he wants to come through and smoke a blunt. Buddy, I'm doing three interviews today. I don't got no time to smoke a blunt. I don't even smoke blunt, so you, you, clearly you don't know me too well if you think that that uh, idea 
makes sense. People always hit me with that. Like, let me just come through and chill. I'm like, I'm not chilling. I'm stressed out all day. I'm pulling my fucking hair out. You see this hairline? I'm pulling my hair out all day. I'm trying to make some content. I got okay. no time to chill. And if on. I do have any time to chill, I'm probably going to be like eating my meal prep. I should have probably, probably worked out when you were speaking about ADN and thing. This is boring. And, uh, come on, get to the point. Where's ADN really stuff? Enjoying? Oh, he got me fucked up. Oh, right. All right, sorry. My apologies to THF. I don't want to get involved in a new relationship thing. I take it back. I'll phone him. I'll phone him great. I don't want to be involved with that. So I'm sure I've heard things about THF. I heard about what's getting sprayed up. I'm not trying to be next. But I, I do think Crip Mac and you, some chemistry between Clayton Doll and Crip Mac, right? Yes, he feel like he feel like he could speak on what he want about my relationships because he want me, you know? Okay, I'm not. I'm not for this. I'm gonna skip this one. Let's do it. You and him together. Nope, I don't want this. Let's skip this. Want to meet him. Nope. People we'll start trying to get added, and I'm such a nice guy that it's like, okay, I'm just gonna add everybody. So you know, probably I could kind of imagine some people that I fuck with uh, being offended or not being fans of some of the the way that that conversation went. You know, it's tricky being in the 22 store these days. Nobody gets along. Everybody hates each other. Everybody got problems. This content over everything thing that Adam is doing is definitely going to get someone killed. That's no exaggeration. This content over everything strategy that this guy is currently engaged in, somebody's definitely going to die. I don't know who, I don't know when, but this content over everything approach is definitely going to result in somebody's death. Oh, look, look, this is not... This is a list of invites, not a, a list of requests. See, this shit is very confusing me. But, yeah, I mean, I woke up this morning, and it's crazy how, how like, this is what pisses me off, is that when, when I was, when all these hosts left, you know, Here we they go. were all throwing dirt on my name, right? Here we go. They were all Here trying we go. To make me look bad, spread fake narratives, act like I was a bad friend, act like I was trying to get people set up and exposed as being trans people lovers, et cetera, instead of just really like riding with their, their boss, like the guy who gave them opportunities through their whole. If I'm house phone, I'm going to be so in like, this is the thing about Adam that's really odd. As a fan of No Jumper back then, the obvious thing for me in that whole breakup was that especially once the dust settled, it's obvious that the way AD, T-Rail, Duno, Pun, and all those guys painted the breakup wasn't exactly what happened, right? It's sort of like the breakup happened, the split happened, the friction happened, and it was an opportune time for all those guys to go full time in what they were doing anyway, right? But the crux of the issue is for me was that it was fairly obvious that the issues kind of stemmed a lot from Adam's side of things because he was not a good boss. He was an ineffective communicator. Um, he just didn't know how to get across that he wasn't happy that those guys were doing their own thing on the side. That's what it felt like in the beginning. In the beginning, it felt like he wasn't really happy that they were creating drama at the office, taking that drama on their platforms, using it as content pieces, boosting their platform, getting the views on their side, not having them come to No Jumper, or exhausting all the talking points on their show. By the time they speak about it on No Jumper, they're kind of tired and bored of it, or they don't have any hot takes, or da 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 Adam has every right to be annoyed if he's the boss and he's the owner of No Jumper, that his hosts are taking drama from that place and doing their own thing. You shouldn't be doing that. I'm sure there's some sort of rules like people at Barstool put in place to avoid those sort of situations. Everything should be kind of in-house and kind of serving the bottom line or coming back home under that same roof. I get it but he didn't communicate properly with anybody. It let it fester. It rumbled on. People started taking liberties. It started taking the piss a little bit more. It started graying with him. He started some friction with people individually. And then eventually kind of broke down. But the crux of the issue, I feel like, was his own uh, inability to accept personal responsibility for things that he did wrong and also to rein these guys in earlier. He just didn't do it soon enough. And by the time he wanted to do it, it was too late. But... For me as a fan, one of the really gross things about that whole breakup wasn't even the AD Tiro Panduno shit. It was the stuff that happened with Housephone. Adam22 being a close friend of Housephone and allowing that trans woman to get on house, to get on no jumper and basically expose Housephone for 
fucking him, to get, fucking him or whatever they did was, I feel like, one of the biggest betrayals of trust I've ever seen online. And if that happened to me personally, I'd want you dead. It's 100%. If that's meant to be your friend and they're allowing that person to come on their platform and say what they say, expose what they expose. Fair enough, if, if it was recorded, you could then cut it off later. Even if it was live streamed, you can take down the fucking stream. Whatever you could do to make an effort to show, hey, I'm sorry this happened. But the fact that he made no effort to do so, he put the blame on the fucking producers, he absolved himself of blame, he accepted no responsibility of that shit, was fucking gross. But if it was me, and I was those guys, and I saw the way Adam treated Housephone, who was a close friend of his, I would have been like, you know what, this this is a warning sign. This is a big red flag. Because if he can do this to somebody that he knows, who's meant to be his close friend, imagine what he'll do to us. We're already on thin ice with him anyway. Imagine what he'll do to us. So the fact that he can't even look at it from that point of view and understand why some people didn't like the way he approached things, or how it could have maybe left a bad taste in some people's mouths, pause, whatever it may be, is baffling to me but again narcissist behavior it all kind of makes sense career uh and that was rough for me it was a it was a tough time in my life to realize that a lot of people that i had a lot of faith in uh were basically snakes and that they you know ultimately didn't give a fuck about me and, and were happy to paint fake negative narratives about me on the way out the door but now that like the, the, the... And I also got the feeling too, there's a part of him that just must be embarrassed that he let such a lame, like such a lame guy like Lush bring his entire network down, bring his entire platform down to its knees. One lapse in coffee, one lapse in concentration, one lapse in judgment in sharing news about some restructuring he wanted to do to No Jumper with an employee in Lush who's you know, a bit of a loser anyway. He then goes and shares it on a Discord and that leads to all of the rumblings. Must have been such an embarrassing L for Adam to kind of take because it essentially was his fault. If he didn't speak about that internal issue with another employee and it didn't come out the way it came out with the fucking Chinese whisper side of things, it wouldn't have ended the way it would have, it would, the way it ended, I don't think so. It probably would have eventually still ended. I just don't think it would have ended in that way. Because it seemed like he was talking behind people's backs. He wasn't because now the truth has come out that he did speak to AD personally and tell him you want to take him off of this show. But he did make that comment. But the fact that he let Lush bring his fucking network to his knees must be so embarrassing. Smoke has cleared and the dust has settled a little bit. And I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious that the... Uh... The, the fat immunity channel is not really going anywhere. <laughs> that, that's fat immunity. <laughs> clearly like the last priority for these guys that they're all focused on their own platforms, which was already the case. So it's like, you know, they basically are in a situation where they left no jumper to start a no jumper clone. And then they're not putting any attention into no jumper. But for some reason, like uh, that's un again, I love how he's diminishing or dismissing the progress that they've made. No Jump has been around for years. I don't know how long. It must be more than 10 years. They, you know, they, And again, most of it has been off of the back of their legendary interviews for some, with some of the most legendary rappers, some of, who, some of who are still here, some who have passed. But essentially, they've had a long time to build some social capital, some social credit, to build up its reputation. And even till now, to this day, some people don't like Adam, but they respect the platform. And that all comes from all the work of those of yesteryears. So those guys are only, what, two years in or something? They've done pretty well to be able to have a platform where they can put their friends on, put some money in their pocket or in other aspects, put weed in their pocket because most of those guys don't pay each other. But regardless, like for them to be able to have channels that are still able to garner a decent amount of views, decent amount of followings and shit, that's pretty much still a big achievement, especially when you consider most of those guys outside of being associated with No Jumper they're no ones, really. Do you know what I mean? In a grand scheme of things, right? They're not really like, you know, they're not big rappers. They're not big personalities. They're able to take whatever little fame and attention they were getting on No Jumper and parlay into doing what they're doing now. That's fucking amazing. That's actually quite sensational to see. Don't get me wrong. It's not as big and as bad as it probably should be. But the way he's dismissing it is kind of funny. Like, people don't want to see me acknowledge this. Anytime I call out the fact that everybody thought that my career was over... Um, 
anytime I acknowledge the fact that that is not the case, that our YouTube channel is killing it, that I think we got... Four Hold on, but didn't you say, didn't you think your career was over too? He's the one that kind of played into that narrative by disappearing for like, I don't know how long it was. It felt like two weeks or three weeks. He wasn't on any shows. He, he would bounce in and out of the new show here and there, but he was obviously going through a bit of a downtime. Like, why is he acting as if like that narrative just was out, just came out of the blue? People came pull into it because you were not on camera. 45 uh, million views last month. Um, as soon as I start acknowledging how funny it is that you dumb fucks, not, not like all of you, but some of you, that some of y'all really believed that Snake Boy was up next. Like, like people really thought that Snake Boy's name was mm. going to be in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame right next to me and Academics and Vlad and Joe Budden and Charlemagne or whatever. Whoa. <laughs> Adam 22 is letting these nuts hang, yo. Fair play. I don't know about the Hip Hop Hall of Fame shit. He needs to relax. And now that the smoke has cleared a little bit, people are realizing that the motherfucker can barely put a sentence together. Uh, he's zesty as fuck. He, he thinks that he's like gonna get a Skims deal. I don't even know how to how to put into words how insane this is that people thought that the next Adam Twenty Two was gonna be somebody who really has almost nothing to offer when it comes to takes. Mm, to be fair, he can't be saying this about. I don't know if he's talking about AD or TRL, but either person, he believed in both. He believed heavily in AD and he believed heavily in TRL. Um, to the point where, you know, he was starting to become a little bit more closer to both of those guys and shit. So I like how he's rewriting the narrative, but you saw a potential in both of those dudes. Hence why you brought them on. Hence why you want them to do their own shows, bring their people on the shows as well. Like, let's relax a little bit. He's he's kind of, he's over woofing here. And whatnot. And, and shout out Sauce Walk. I see you in the chat. I'm really trying to get down with Sauce. Not get down like that. Like, I don't want to squabble. He'll probably beat the shit out of me. But Sauce Walker, that's my boy. 5k in he's telling me the price on live sauce walker what the fuck i've seen you laying pipe on only fans before don't tell him don't give away the game don't tell him how much the interview gonna cost See, i fucked up because sauce walker invited me to his live show a couple weeks ago and i forgot about it and i didn't go because i was doing interviews all day and then i was like yo but we should do an interview anyway and i'm like you're not gonna do it you're not gonna do it because i just fucking i didn't go to his show like maybe he would come through do the interview if i had gone to his show going to the show if i brought a cameraman with him i probably would have got better fucking content than doing the interview anyway but either way i, I gotta fuck with sauce walker and that's that's all there is to it free drippy um but anyway yeah like i got blocked today just for pointing out that there was a tampon string hanging out <laughs> i mean realistically <laughs> though like the two of <laughs> Big up Heather. I love that he's calling Heather Lever as well. That's fucking incredible. But yeah, um, <laughs> big up Heather. Situation is crazy because, you know, as soon as his podcast started popping off, as soon as, uh, not, not podcast, but as soon as Back on Fix started doing its thing, he decides, oh, I'm going to add my girl. I'm going to make my girl be the co-host. The other day I seen a, a, a poll in, a, in the chat or in, in the Back on Fig Reddit. So that's their Reddit. That's not like the hater ass no jumper uh, Reddit. That's their Reddit, and it was like, should leather be removed from the podcast? I think it was ninety percent of people said yes. Ninety percent of their fans said that she needed to be removed from the podcast. Now, this but that's the beauty of having your own podcast. Fans could want certain things, but you could just do whatever the fuck you want. As much as the fans, myself included, probably think Heather should probably be on as less shows of back and figures possible because it's his own thing he can do what the fuck he wants and clearly he does because he doesn't give a fuck what anyone says and he keeps her on the show so it's a strange thing to sort of beat somebody over the head with to be honest but hey what can you do this creates a really really big problem for him because a he's in debt for millions of dollars so he's basically like funneling his house and everything Every expense, every cost is going through her because he's, like, legally not allowed to have money because, obviously, if he had money, like, if he had a couple hundred grand in the bank, boom, they're coming for it. They're going to take it because he owes hella money. <laughs> Yo, I didn't exposing t -Rell. This is fucking hilarious because all I keep hearing un underneath this exposure and this fucking ripping into is just somebody that misses their friend. That's all I hear. I'm hearing somebody that misses their friend dearly. 
And the sad thing about men is that we can't just say stuff like that. Like you can't just be open and say, you know what? I'm really hurt and I feel betrayed. I felt like these guys are my friends and I miss them. I miss them dearly. Like we spent a lot of time together. We were colleagues at first, but it obviously the relationship kind of evolved from then and it kind of turned into an actual friendship. And I miss their friendship. I miss speaking to them. But men can't just be honest and say that because you sound like a bitch. So you have to kind of do this whole like, yeah, his wife, no one wants on the pod. He got no money. He's broke. Who wants him? Skims on what? Like, you have to do all this fucking posturing, all this name calling and pointing when really the crux of it is you miss your friends. It's fine. Just say it. And so he has to keep on good terms with Heather. He can't, uh, you know, just fuck off or he can't even really tell her that he doesn't want her on the podcast anymore even though 90 percent of the people on the pod uh who watch the shit don't want her on the shit anymore adam doesn't understand being in a, in a relationship where if you agree to something and then it doesn't turn out to be the right thing you can't then just turn around and change your mind because you're in a relationship with that person you don't want to hurt their feelings so i could believe a scenario where T-Rell brought Heather onto the show back on Fig and made her a co-host because he thought she'd be a good addition to the show. Then over time, Heather being Heather, a little bit hard to kind of enjoy on the show, a little bit annoying. She's got a good times, but you know, she can be a little bit um, of, a, of a, she could be a little bit grating to listen to on that show. He could have realized later, oh shit, she's not that good. But then how do you fire your own wife, the mother of your children from a podcast? How do you do that? What man who wants to stay in a relationship, who doesn't want to get thrown out of the house, would ever have the balls to tell their wife, hey, you're fired. How do you do that, you know? So Adam doesn't understand that some people are relationships where you love the person and you care for them and you care about their feelings, that you don't want to fire them, even though they, they you know, you should. Because in Adam's way, if that was Lena, he would just fire her and it would be whatever because they're all about the money, right? They've already proved it. Their relationship isn't really based on love. It's just transactional. Whatever kind of serves the bank account, serves the bank account. No one's judging, but he can't comprehend how, you know, you can't just fire your fucking wife. It's not that easy. <laughs> so he's kind of fucked in that regard. He can't get rid of her because obviously, like, but they canceled, like, they're supposed to be on, on Fridays, right? They canceled last week. And now it's like every single time she goes back there, can you imagine what's going through her head when she's reading the fucking chat <laughs> and just like, uh, and just seeing it and just realizing that. But the one thing that I don't like, I have to be honest, and I agree with the Reddit and people on social. The one thing that I don't like is the fact that these guys are doing this whole like, um, back on fig dudes are being a little bit like, oh, we're not going to respond. They're trying to act like they're better than Adam. They're responding. No, 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 no. You were dunking on him when he was down. When it looked like he was down and out, when he went on a bit of a, you know, a bit of a retreat and he kind of stepped away from the content, he was a bit down in the dumps. You guys were dancing on his grave. You can't then now try to like act like you're victims when he's kind of firing back at you. Fire back at him too. The same way you do other people. But they won't because unfortunately, although he's annoying, although he's a bit obnoxious and insufferable, he's not lying. You know, you can't accuse him of lying. He's being annoying. He's being insufferable. He's being a jerk, but he's not lying. Like the fan base has officially turned on her. And when you look at the numbers on uh, Mondays versus Fridays, I, I, every once in a while I'll tap in and look at the Monday episodes versus the Friday episodes. A lot of times it's like the Monday episodes get two times as many views as the Friday episode. So that shit's all f fucked up. And she got him acting like a F A G G O T on the fucking Instagram reels. Jesus like, I don't even know Christ, how he bro. thought that shit was okay. Like doing free skims at. If T Rod doesn't go off on Adam, there's something wrong here, bro. If he doesn't go off on him, because the way he goes off on everybody else, this guy is like approaching the disrespect levels. He's pushing that line. He's pushing that line the way he's talking about your missus, brother. Come on, T Rod. Come on, you got to crush out on Adam. You got to crush out Adam the same way you crush out on everybody else. We need to see it, brother. Uh, it's like, oh, no. And, th and this is the shit. Like, I, I could just sit here and just armchair quarterback the fucking demise of their platform all the time. But I just don't because it doesn't really feel like it's important enough for me to sink time and energy. <laughs> you just did it, though. <laughs> into, even though they you just did it. Very much went out of their way to make tons of content about me and try to drag me down. They haven't spoken about him in a long time, though, to be fair. So he is choking out of his ass here. 
but it just feels a little bit low. But then I think about academics and Rory and Maul, and I'm like, well, I've been watching academics talk about Rory and Maul for like a couple of years now, and he doesn't seem like he's getting sick of it. He's just really using them for content and having something to talk about. Um, somehow, but but that's all right. That's the difference, though, is that Rory and Maul, they were never academics employees. So if they were ex academics employees, maybe he would look like a salty, uh, you know, shitty ex boss. Or he still looks salty and shitty going at Rory Moore all the time anyway. No one says no one says he wasn't in the wrong for going at them the first time. If the story is true about Rory allegedly leaving that note in his house and coming to his house and shit to, you know, to intimidate him, he's got every right to go off on them the way he did. But after a while, it looks a bit lame. When the guys are not responding back to you, they're not giving you any sort of attention. You're just shouting into the wind and you're thinking you're doing anything by shouting through your camera also. You're not bucking them up. You're not meeting to squabble. You're just screaming through a fucking mic and through a webcam. It looks a bit lame. So it's not as if people don't think Ak is lame. It's just it's an entirely different situation. Or whatever, if he was talking about them. So I can understand where that narrative comes from. But let me just say this, is that my favorite thing about all this, and I'm not really seeing that much of the, the chat right now. It's only when I hit the it's only when I hit the red light do I do I get to really see the chat. But um it's just hilarious because like all right, think about AD. AD <laughs> left no jumper, right? Nah, fucking no. Adam is not having it today, isn't it? Adam really misses these guys. He really misses these guys. He's going at each one by one individually. First T Row got it, then Heather. Now it's AD. Fucking hell, Adam, bro. This is like immense hater energy. Like, relax. It's not that deep. Yes, you all fell out and shit, but you, you've you somehow been able to steady the ship at No Jumper. You've got your new, a couple of new hosts here and there. The shows are doing okay from what I've seen in terms of views. People are liking what you're doing. Like, relax, bro. Raw, Ted. He, he had time today. Right. So when he left No Jumper, he really kind of fucked me over. Right, because all of a sudden we had like some hosts. They all kind of leave at the same time. It makes no jumper look bad. It fucked me over. Even though we got it right back, and we're now making more money than we were making when they were with the channel and everything. Yeah, but that's because you got less people to pay. Come on, again. Let's come on, come on, come on, Adam. That period of no jumper was the best it's ever been. Ever. Maybe prior. Maybe since the time that you was. You know. In, maybe since he was. Yeah, that new, that period of AD, t and those guys in House Phone was the best since the last best, which was the time when he was interviewing all the SoundCloud rappers and shit, right? That era of, of No Jumper. But that also was something that couldn't be sustainable because it relied heavily on the talent of that era. And obviously, if they get locked up or pass away, it kind of takes away from your platform. But House Phone, Blasi, Yuri, Tok. AD, t -Rail, all those guys do know they kind of added another lease of life to No Jumper. They made it somewhat relevant again. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. This guy's acting a bit weird. Like, let's let's be real. So, it, that, that's why it made those shows popping. They'll get hundreds of thousands of views, people tuning into the live streams, the chats were going off, loads of drama, loads of beef, loads of arguments. Like that, that was a good era. So, him to say they're making way more money now with objectively worse hosts, like, yeah, because you've got less people to pay. You know what I mean, not less mouths to feed. Come on, bro. Thing like that. But the crazy thing about it is that he totally fucked me over. Me being basically like the person who's helped me. him more in his adult life than <laughs> anyone else. Wow. Think about it. Try to think of somebody. Everybody else. Wow. The disrespect is crazy. Yo, Adam saying to AD, I'm your father, bro. I'm your dad. Call me Papa. Call me papa, call me father, call me daddy. D-A-D-D-Y. Whoa, A-D, bro. What they do, they didn't put money in your pocket. They just fucking brought you on stage and had you be their hype man. Jesus or like brought you to their shows and let you stand on stage next to them or whatever. I put real money in A-D's pocket. Jesus. And then he fucked me over. The thing is, though, it, it didn't help him in any way. Like, he did not benefit from leaving no jumper in any way he's making way less money now on his own than he was when he was at no jumper if, if it's it's not all about money though that's what he really fails to understand surely at this point he must realize how difficult it is to work with him how hard it is to like him does he know that's the thing i don't realize oh adam 
Does he think he's a likable person? Does he think people enjoy working for him? Especially when he's on, when you get on his bad side, when he has a mood of you, or when he thinks you are doing bad podcasting and shit. Like, come on, bro. Come on. And there is absolutely no reason, no sign that that's going to change in the future. So he left No Jumper mm -hmm. to start something that is already basically dead in the form of the fact. Not really, but why do, why can't he leave No Jumper to start something so that he could just be at least self-sustainable and not have to kind of suck on your teeth? Is that not a good thing? Is that not something that's worthwhile to do? I'm sure there's many people that would that would take that route. Maybe make less money, but then, you know, make it on your own terms. Not a bad deal. That Music Girls channel. And, I mean, like, just think about that. He fucked me over, but didn't help himself in the process. That is exactly how you do not backdoor somebody. If you backdoor somebody, you're supposed to profit from it as a result, whether through money or cloud or a business or connection, whatever. So many things wrong with that when you really think about it. And then you also have to look at T. Rowe. He really got fucked in the process because he got dragged along with it. Like, T. Rowe was really starting to seem like he might turn into something. But then AD and Punk convinced him to leave No Jumper. And it's been pretty fucking quiet, you know. And now they've, they've kind of, like, moved past. Before, it was just them kicking it. Now it's always a guest. Every episode, damn near, has a guest. They can't. What's wrong with that? can't really just kick and just talk anymore because they don't really have like the communicative ability to like really <laughs> be that ah, he's calling them dumb <laughs> oh my god adam is actually on mad i wouldn't even call it demon time he's really letting his nuts hang he's calling them dumb <laughs> they don't have the ability to communicate with each other on the podcast effectively <laughs> without a guest wow you know, you look at the Joe Biden podcast, like they're they're very good at just having conversations about whatever every week. Right. These dudes are not talented enough to necessarily do that. So they got to bring in guests now and they got to try to, like, do the interviews as part of the stream, whatever. But the fucking hilarious thing that I know that you guys see taking place. I know you guys see this taking place is that the manager who was supposed to be, you know, bringing these dudes. Here comes together, pun. Who was supposed to help them be this tight-knit group that they claim that they are is now doing a stream where he brings the fans on and basically drums up controversy and turmoil between the different hosts and it's like clearly causing a lot of division and, and spite amongst them and you'll notice that like AD won't even go on it because the, the negative narratives about him that the fans are obviously going to spin I mean, AD too sensitive for that. Like, he's just not going to be able to just sit there and smile while people point out that he left no jumper and has nothing as a result. So now you have you have Mr. Potato Head basically just doing these streams <laughs> that are tearing up Mr. Potato Head. Apart these dudes. And everybody is too bitch made to step up and say, like, hey, that shit ain't cool. And it really strikes a chord with me because I was that bitch made as well. Remember when I used to fucking have the no jumper show going and 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 uh you know at the end of the day and all this kind of shit and then i had pun excuse me pumpkin head i had mr fucking potato pumpkin head uh doing streams talking all kinds of crazy shit and i mean i'm sitting there like bro this is the manager to my talent to one of my main talent and he's over here just drumming up controversy on his stream to help his stream and then meanwhile i just like i, I I'm not allowed to do anything about it because whenever I would try to say something about it to AD, it would become obvious to me that he was too scared of, of uh, Potato Head to, to really even like... Okay, if AD's too scared to say it to his manager, why don't you go and say it to Pundin? That's the thing I don't like about, about Adam. He's, he's a little bit like academics. They, they, they can talk with chest from the comfort of their own car, behind the laptop behind a computer in their studio but they never keep this energy in front of people pun was always there whenever ad was at no jumper when all those guys were there he was there in the background if you had a problem with pun why didn't you speak to him in person and get it out of the way obviously he didn't want to do that because he was scared and now because those guys are way up you know they're not in his vicinity he has his own security and shit 
right? He's feeling comfortable now. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's a very odd dude, very strange guy, because he's acting as if, like, he never saw Pun when he was at No Jumper. He was there all the time. Pun was always sitting in the background, maybe sitting next to AD whenever the shows are on. Why is it like he never saw him? Why didn't you tell him this stuff? Hmm. Stand up for himself and tell his manager that he was clearly having a negative impact on his career and his future with No Jumper. But that's the funny shit. I remember telling Josh and telling fucking... Uh, <laughs> telling whoever, Josh. Telling, telling my other guys at the office, telling them, like, that it's going to be interesting because once they leave No Jumper, they're going to have to actually figure out how to make content and they're not going to be able to just beef with each other. Why does he keep saying this as if, like, they're not doing any... Like, he's acting as if No Jumper's doing anything that drastically different to what Fig Munity World, Back on Fig or Ace Boys or communities doing differently. What are they doing actually that different than them? It's still all the same shit. It's a bunch of people sitting in front of a microphone similar to mine, talking into fucking cameras. Most of it is the same thing. Talking about cultural topics, pop culture stuff, maybe hot button topics. Why is he acting as if like he's doing something way different than what they're doing over there? It's the same shit. Different levels, different scales, different audience, maybe different people talking about these topics, but it's basically the same thing. Because why would they want to beef with each other when it's their platform? I thought they were just doing the beef thing because it was my platform. And when you're on my platform, it's like, oh, you, you can be messy and you can cause drama and you can cause all this controversy and stuff. I didn't think they were going to keep doing that when they left. It turns out... Aren't you doing the same thing too when they left? Aren't they doing exactly the same thing? Isn't he interviewing Brick Baby's ops and shit? Like, isn't he having, like, manufactured beef and, you know, um, conflict with fucking um, WAC 100 on his show? They're doing exactly the same things. They're manufacturing drama. They're leaning into the fucking conflict, leaning into the disagreements for clicks and views. They're all doing the same thing. So why is he acting like he's better than them? That's all they're doing. They're doing that way worse than they were doing it when they were at No Jumper, just constant drama. And it's funny as fuck, too. Weren't you, the pro you were the main protagonist of the drama. You kept the drama going at No Jumper. You did not at one point try to stop that shit. You did make tentative efforts, but you kept doing it. Come on, man. What's he talking about? Look in the mirror. Because you got the Apollo, who are just, like, making it so much worse and just, like, every negative narrative you could possibly think about with z -Rail and everybody... They're just hyping it up for their own content, which to me is like the funniest fucking thing in the world because they can't do anything about it because half of those dudes with the Mac Wops and the Keems, I mean, those dudes are better on camera than, I mean, all right, those two dudes, Keem and what's his name, uh, Mac Wop, both, both better on camera than Smack or Duno or AD. So you guys pick the wrong starting lineup. Let's just, let's start there. I mean, <laughs> divide and conquer time. Look at this guy. Smack got nothing to offer. He came back. He was gone for months with no foot. He came back, did nothing. Like, there's no boost in views. He hasn't even shown up since then. I mean, that, that's crazy. It's supposed to be a boost when you come back if you're gone for a few months, right? Didn't happen. Um, if he gets beaten up, I don't want to see him complaining. Don't press charges. Don't crown the internet. Like, you're doing a lot. Adam's doing a lot, bro. Like, this confidence and this kind of bravado he's speaking with, I think it comes from a point of view where he knows he's not going to ever cross paths with those type of dudes. But, God damn it, Adam, man. You need to relax, brother. And then you got, like, I mean, AD is clearly peaked. Like, could anyone fathom a future in which AD is doing better or has more of a fan base or like has the people more interested in, in him than right now or than in the past. I mean, it's, it's obviously not happening. Like obviously as soon as he left no jumper, it just began a steep downhill. Jesus crawl Christ. To nothingness. Meanwhile, uh, the no jumper store, we ran Sorel off the block. They can't even sell tube tops no more. Cause we out there now. Um, and there's this, you know, everything's going pretty well with no jumper. I mean, obviously the Adam and Wack show is bigger than any of the shows that they got going on. They can't even hit 90 K. They can't even hit a hundred K on the, uh, on the shame on you shit. 
So shame on y'all. I think the shame on you was meant for me, right? Shame on y'all for leaving and and not even. <laughs> they named the show what? It despite him. Like, okay, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking insane. Benefiting as a result. You know, it's one thing to screw somebody over that like really went hard for you. Really screwing somebody over who like did everything possible for you. Anyway, I'm bored now. Okay, Adam doesn't like them. Adam kind of misses them. Who knows? I'm eager to see what the response is from those guys. What will they what will they do? Will they respond? Will they try to act like they're over it and bigger than it, bigger than him and want to move on? Personally, I think if you're if you're T-Rel and you're telling Yaya to go kill herself and you're wishing death on her and you're screaming at girls and you're being mad confrontational and shit you have to bring that smoke to Ad adam 22 as well he, he's doing a bit too much he's insulting your girl he's insulting you you have to you have to bring that kind of same energy but he won't because unfortunately adam has a lot more probably truth bombs to drop on the guy so we'll just see this kind of like you know pretend to be over it pretend to be a mature type of vibe and the drama will continue but don't be surprised if this content over everything strategy that both sides of the camp are showing results in somebody's death, don't be surprised because these guys are doing a little bit too much on both sides of the fence. It's a little bit too much. Anyway, moving.